Thanks for the introduction. Uh, much obliged. Uh, Painted a very good picture of myself. Um, thanks for coming along and uh, listening to me today. Uh, I'm kind of coming from a different perspective than probably most people in the room. Uh, most people in the room tend to be conservators. Uh, I'm coming from more a practical background. Uh, having spent 30 years as a consultant, contractor, uh, dealing with historical community. We're all aware of the unprecedented technological change that's going on across conservation at present. Um, I personally believe that for historic home repair and maintenance, we have an opportunity right in front of us to change the way that we do things, to change the way that we approach repair, change the way we approach practice and training as well. In fact, I'm convinced digital technologies such as laser scanning, cloud computing, and virtual reality can redefine the way we do things. Uh, so, over the past four or five years, we've been involved in a number of research projects uh, with a number of industry collaborators. What we have here is we have, uh, we went and managed to gain some funding to carry out some demonstration projects, because the idea was to try and build some deck a database of demonstration projects so that we can actually show to the small medium enterprises the benefits of digitizing their workflow processes because it's really difficult for SMEs they're really it's a cultural thing it's why do they want to change they don't need to change they make it they're making earning enough profit they're, they're doing the, they do the same thing year on year and, and it, they don't seem to want to change but again, it's because they don't have any hard evidence in front of them to actually generate that change. So that was the idea behind the research that we've been carrying out. But first, I would just like to give a little roadmap. Um, hopefully you'll recognise the place. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you a little brief background to the research, actually some of the challenges that why we feel it's important to look at these, uh, this type of research um, and also look at the research methodology that was adopted. Because we, we decided that we wanted to have a, a pragmatic approach, a nice step-by-step -step approach to actually determine what the challenges were faced by SMEs and how we would want to possibly overcome these. And thirdly, we'll look at the case study projects, and obviously because the time scale, I can't go and delve into them too deeply, so it's just basically a brief run through or a fly through. And for the fourth part, we'll present some of the, some of the initial findings that we've actually uh, came up with, and then we'll, I'll summarise at the end. <laughs> so for the background, why did we believe this research was important? Well, we believe that the repair and maintenance of Scotland's stone-built, non-domestic and domestic pre-1919 historical uh, stock is vitally important not only economically, but socially and environmentally. It generates so much, uh, so much money across the, the country and it employs so many people as well, you know, that probably aren't even connected to the historic home repair and maintenance sector itself. So what did we know? Well, we knew that there was numerous challenges. And within those numerous challenges, we had things like, at present, we're spending over £600 million, million pound a year annually on the repair of these buildings. And we're doing that every year. And there's no difference in the uh, disrepair levels. We're still sitting at 90% disrepair levels. And we have been for a number of years. So we need to look at different alternatives or innovative solutions to try and overcome this. Because we're also faced with uh, huge amounts of skills deficiencies, skill shortages which is a knock-on effect on the people who have the ability to do that. So, and then we have the issue um, where we don't have enough young people coming into the sector as well, which is a huge problem. So we're, we're getting to that kind of stage now where tacit knowledge and experience is almost, it's becoming an inherent, an inherent valuable experience within our sector. And we're trying to hold on to the older generation, but at the same time entice the younger generation. So how do we entice the younger generation? Well, the first thing that we do is we bring them into the digital world. Because <laughs> most young people now, the smartphone or the tablet is their best friend. It's their paper diary. 
the life belongs in there. So we try and we try to look at how we can encourage these types of things. <laughs> also, what we've got is that one of the big things in projects is that they tend, you tend to find that it's all about the the fantastical iron triangle, triangle, time, cost, and quality. That's what most SMEs and also the clients are interested in. Is that you deliver on time, you deliver to the agreed cost, and you deliver to the quality. And that's difficult in the historic government sector. If you've been involved in doing repair and maintenance, it's very difficult because you've got things like <coughs> hidden repair issues that you don't see at that at first visual examination. So looking at digital technologies can they help us uh, overcome these types of things. <coughs> so we know that there's numerous challenges. We know that we have the sector has a heavy reliance on specialist SMEs and invariably they tend to be have a workforce of between 1 to 10. So it's very difficult. And one of the big problems that we have as well is not only in the SME contractor sector, but also in the professional sector as well. It's similar issues, skill shortages, skill deficiencies. And then this that ends up in the continual use of silo working, where everybody works in individual silos, nobody ever talks to each other. And then we wonder why we get to the project, and the project then ends up in an overspend because we end up doing things two and three times. We keep repeating things. <coughs> so what, what don't we know? Well, the big thing that we don't know is the potential benefits towards productivity and performance for the sector. This is one thing. We, we can stand here all day long and talk about the, the benefits that digital technologies can bring. But right now, the, the, there's no hard data out there for these SMEs to actually say yes, I'm going to pick up a, do a bit of photogrammetry, I'm going to do a bit of laser scan, or I'm going to use a drone. There's nothing out there at present to give us some real hard facts. There's some high-end data for your high-end conservation, but if we're looking at most of the sector, most of the sector is SMEs who deliver around about this area. And then what we want to do is we, we really want to see what, what the benefits are. Not only from a practice point of view, but from a training point of view, from a recruitment point of view, from a retention point of view. Can we encourage people to come into the sector? Can we encourage people to stay in the sector? And one of the big things about that is we need to show a return on investment. And the research aim is, as I said, was hopefully to develop guidelines that how to implement digital technologies, scalable from small scale projects to high end projects and also develop further case studies so that we'll have a database and then hopefully advance current practice and also provide a bit of industry stimulus you know trying to get a cultural change you know it's hard enough to get them get people to spend money on the repair and maintenance of their historic buildings to begin with now we're asking them to change to use digital technologies and, and really get involved so it's a, a double part of <laughs> so we all know the digital technologies that are available that allow us to capture, create and disseminate. So the usual ones, we, we looked at can we get SMEs to engage in laser scan? Can we get them to engage in infrared thermo thermography? Can we get them engaged with drones? Can we get them engaged with digital photogrammetry? And probably the easiest one for them to get engaged with is cloud computing and mobile apps. Because most of the Operators and also the managing directors or anybody involved in an SME has a smartphone. I'm not going to ask everybody to put their hands up and tell me who's got a smartphone, but I'm pretty much to say that we probably need a hundred percent of the audience here. <laughs> so, what was the research methodology? Well, what we wanted to do was carry out an exploratory action research uh, study. So, what we wanted to do was actually have a live project. Rather than retrospectively looking at a project, we wanted to get involved with a project that was live at that moment. That was difficult to get industry collaborators on board because a lot of people don't like to you prying about when they're actually doing the project. They're quite happy if we you to actually look at it retrospectively, but not when they're actually ongoing. So the research methods we used. First of all, what we did was we carried out 14 semi-structured interviews with various key industry experts from a professional SME background and also a contractor background. So we actually got a 
a, a balanced view of what the current management issues were, what the problems were, were with on-site processes and practice. One of the things that we did come across during the interviews was the continual answer was that there was no defined repair and maintenance process. So when we went, actually went and looked at the literature and looked at see if we could base it in academic theory, we found out that there was no processing that had been done in the historic building sector, repair and maintenance sector. So lo and behold, we've got another gap that we need to go and look at. But for the, for the projects itself, we decided, right, let's carry out a base level process model. So we basically asked the interviewees what they felt was a stereotypical process when they are involved in projects. So from that, we were able then to identify where we could implement digital technologies and where we could benefit the most at this early stage in the research. And that also allowed us to try and raise awareness on our return on investment comparative analysis. Because what we wanted to do was, we actually said to the SAEs, look, we're not going to stop you from doing what you do just now. You do your thing. You're good at doing your thing, so you go ahead and do it. What we did was we ran the, we ran the digital technologies in parallel. So it was almost like a ghost project that we were running in parallel with the existing project. Because one of the big things that he did say to our industry collaborator, did say to us was, you're not going to slow me down with you. Our idea was to try and uh, make them a little bit faster. So <laughs> after a few uh, deep conversations about what types of projects that we would look at, we decided, right, the industry collaborator offered us three projects, and they were all on the west coast of Scotland. One in Glasgow, one in Greenock, and one in Harrowford in Ayrshire. But one of the problems was, what did we want to look at? So we said to them, look, because of project limitations and time scale, we didn't want to slow the project down as they had asked us to do. We said, look, we'll look at digital surveying and we'll look at if we can actually implement some digital quality control documentation. Some way of moving away from subject subjectivity into objectivity. So the first project, this was the one that we looked at in Greenock. It's a 10 meter high red Ashler sandstone uh, pre-19 block of flats. Stereotypical um, uh, these types of buildings. So that was one of the, the big plus points why we decided to choose this project. The other reason was that it was relatively complex in terms of data capture. So we had uh, circular, molded, planar surfaces that we could capture uh, with regards states of de decay, what needed to be replaced, um, how, we were going to, how we were going to achieve that. And one of the big things as well, in this project, what had actually happened was that the client had actually engaged with a building surveyor to begin with. The building surveyor didn't have the necessary experience and knowledge. He then said, okay, you need to get a structural engineer involved. The structural engineer got involved. He didn't have the necessary experience and knowledge. He then brought on board the contractor. So in real terms, there was three different professions getting involved in a condition survey. So when, a little bit later, when we look at the, the results, uh, you, you'll see some of the costs that, that that generated for the project itself. And that's important because these are costs that can be pushed elsewhere in the project, that could go towards other types of repairs. So we're actually, we're not wasting money, but you know, it could be better portion to uh, various different areas on a project. <laughs> so that was one of the things we would want to look at as well. So what did we do? Well, we, because we had achieved some extra funding from the Scottish Innovation Venture uh, Programme, we decided, right, okay, let's, let's engage with 3D laser scanning. It might not have been that first initial point of contact for an SME, but we thought, right, we've got some extra money, let's do it correct, let's use a 3D laser scanner. So we brought in a private 3D laser scanning company. We thought we'll set up exactly how it would be done as a project. So the 3D laser uh, scanning company came in, as you can see from the images at the bottom, and it took them 15 minutes to laser scan the project. And three different levels of resolution. Um, and what we found was that we actually said to them, look, can you actually increase the accurate 
that we've actually specified originally. And they said yes. So they went ahead again and laser scanned again. But this time it took something like between 30 minutes to 45 minutes for a high, highly accurate uh, scan. So we'd actually booked them out for four hours. So rather than wasting time and money, we said, how about laser scanning the whole street? <laughs> so they said, yeah, fine. We said, we don't need it as accurate as what we're looking for the project, but what we can do with, if we can create a 3D model, what we, the light bulb started going off for us. We started saying, right, okay, these are the things that we need to look at the generation of data that could be for a local authority. So if we carry out a repair, if there's other repairs getting done to the tenements further along the street later on in four or five years, the 3D model's already there. The repairs have already been carried out. We can use that as a benchmark. Now, these are the types of benefits that we gained. You can see that in the first one, there was three different uh, professions, £2,700. All told, it took 28 hours. We then came along, laser scan, carried out some uh, structure, uh, data capture, and it cost a total of 1860 Again, don't, we weren't putting all our eggs in one basket with regards to us. We understand that this is just a demonstration project. We really need to find out more, we really need to define these a little bit more, a little bit more in depth so that we can actually say, right, this is actually replicating across every project that we're, that's happening. Right now, this is just, um, just a snapshot. <laughs> so we carried out two other projects. One was an e-conditioned survey and we used IRT. So we used a nice pocket-sized IRT camera that Flower have developed that's the size of a mobile phone that is perfect for SMEs, for practice. If you just want qualitative data, if you just want a visualization to check that there's issues with the building that you can't see with your normal eyes, then it's perfect. And it worked. So what we did was we used cloud computing, we used mobile apps, and we were able to actually get SME to engage in some sort of progress reporting, actually determine how the project was going. So what that did was that aided in effective communication and collaboration and it allowed a more immersive feel. In the bottom one, we actually took some 360 VR videos using a freely available mobile app. That allowed the client to actually see what was going on, actually get a real feel for what was going on on the project itself. And for the bottom project, uh, one of the clients was actually in the US, we contacted them, said, look, we've got a VR 360 video, do you want to see what's going on? Let's have a look. And he said, yeah. So he went and purchased it. Next day, the phone back, said he couldn't believe it. He says, it, it felt like I was standing on the scaffold outside the project. So, in summary, this is where I visualise historic building repair. Yeah, I know, it's, the, it's not Scotland, it's the palace uh, of Westminster. But you know, the, the amount of money that they're going to be spending on that kind of project, it's these types of technologies that we should really be looking at to actually advance practice. If we advance practice, we can advance training. And there's three projects that we're involved in. So from the, the gap, we thought, there's no process in Martin being done. So we need to develop a structured, holistic and integrated digital workflow. Bit of a mouthful, so we came up with Shadow. It's easier to say Shadow than the other one rolling off the top. Also, because we had been using free apps, we were actually looking at surveying apps and we said, is there an app out there that we can use for historic, that's specifically tailored for historic repair and maintenance? And we're in the middle of developing a prototype. Uh, and finally, we're developing a cyber physical gaming system for immersive construction training. So what we're doing is we're taking the whole lens technology and sensor technology and immersing the operative or the trainee into the augmented world, but at the same time still being in the real world. So what he does is, we're actually, unfortunately, like all tech, we were supposed to be demonstrating today, but the HoloLens is having played up on us. 
we're going to bring it tomorrow, let's get it fixed today, so we'll bring it tomorrow, so you're more than welcome to come along and have a shot of it, and we ask yourself in a bit of power tool training, we use, we're, doing, we're piloting power tool training, so from that we're able to gain data analytics about ergonomics, health and safety, etc. So just to finish, quickly just to finish, I believe we're on the verge of an evolution, not a revolution, a revo an evolution from tradition into the modern world. And I've put up a picture here of Batman, one of my favourite science fiction characters. If you think where he was in the 60s, the ill-fitted, slightly overweight superhero to the iconic Dark Knight of today, the lean, mean, highly efficient machine now. And that's where I think that I'm that we should be looking to take historic building repair. We need to harness digital technologies to overcome a lot of the challenges. Thank you.